Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming to my talk. In these 30 minutes, we will take a virtual short trip to the world of the dragonflies of Cyprus. I will talk about which species fly in Cyprus, how many of them, where and when. I will focus on the species that do not fly in the UK and North Europe, which I thought might be of more, more interest to most of you. Okay. Let me just get rid of something here. Yeah. Okay. Before we proceed, I would like uh, to tell you a few things about myself. I'm not an entomologist. I did not study biological sciences. I'm a business graduate. I worked in IT for many, many years, and but I always liked dragonflies. I had not really considered them as biological organisms. I just liked everything there, the way they looked on, on, uh, on t-shirts, on posters, but never really considered them as biological organisms until I joined BirdLife uh, with my partner and uh, got myself a good camera. And eventually in 2017, I discovered and joined the Cyprus Dragonfly Style Group and started counting dragonflies um, on, uh, and reporting on dragonfly numbers and distribution. We were told then, which we didn't really know, we were citizen scientists and we were very excited. Wanting to share my knowledge about the dragonflies of Cyprus with the Greek speaking population of Cyprus and encourage mainly the young to get in touch with nature. In 2020, during the pandemic, I had plenty of time then, I wrote a field guide about the dragonflies of Cyprus in Greek, the first and only of its kind. I was lucky that uh, Mr. Richard Lewiston agreed in the use of his beautiful drawings in my book together with my photographs. My book was published with the support of BirdLife Cyprus and is being distributed uh, to the uh, schools of Cyprus for free. So that's um, about me. Now, about the Cyprus Dragonfly Study Group, it was established at the end of 2012. It was founded and led by Dr. David Sparrow. Uh, we have uh, currently records from around 700 sites. 50 of them are monitored monthly. Like I have uh, five uh, uh, sites that I, that with my husband, we go, at once or twice a month and, and we monitor. Have 140 sites are regularly monitored. We do transit-based abundance monitoring. And the Cypress Dragonfly Study Group uh, database now contains around 35,000 records. Um, a complete set of data was submitted to and accepted by the IUCN. And it is accepted now that Cyprus is, is uh, uh, the best and most regularly monitored country in, in West and Central Asia area. Uh, yes. Okay. About Cyprus and its geography, I'm sure everybody that's here, they know where Cyprus is. It's in the Eastern Mediterranean, it's below Turkey, next to Syria, where it's really between three continents, Africa, Asia, and Europe. Uh, about its, uh, its morphology, we have two main mountain ranges. The main one, the Trodos Massif, it's the one that has the rivers with some constant flow. Um, um, rainfall, it's very low and predictable between 300 and 1,100 millimeters. Most rainfall uh, falls in, in November to April. So from May to September, there might be no rain at all. Most rivers do not have permanent flow along their entire length. And most rivers are, have been dumped. So we have a lot of... Uh, dams, uh, which offer new uh, habitats, of course, but also downstream, everything is destroyed. Um, uh, dragonfly habitats are kind of unstable because of these uh, conditions. Uh, 
Okay, some pictures from uh, habitats. Okay, I'm playing with, okay. Now, the first one, it's a lake. It's a city lake, actually. It was initially an irrigation lake, and, and now the, the, the town of Nicosia has uh, surrounded it. It's very close to my house. It's one of the habitats I uh, monitor. The next to it, let me just get this pointer. Ah, yes. This one here, it's, uh, it's a natural wetland. Uh, it's an international, um, it's an IPA. It's an important bird area as well. This is in the summer, how it looks in the summer with all this beautiful, colorful vegetation. In the summer, they allow some channels. They, they, they don't drain it completely. Um, there's some channels, uh, so there's lots of dragonflies. This is the same area, the same habitat, but in spring. Um, here is one, a typical dam in Cyprus. It's in the summer, you can see how low the level is. We have uh, lots of these uh, on the mountains. This is another dam, a more naturally looking one. Uh, this has a beautiful entry, a feeder stream and a beautiful exit stream. This is uh, a stony, a uh, rocky uh, habitat for dragonflies. This is, is it's, a, it's a beautiful place. And here's one of the rivers that, uh, uh, that flows south from the Mount, uh, from the Trodos Mountains, these Xeros rivers. We've got the Arizos, Hezos, this is a very typical um, habitat for dragonflies in Cyprus. Okay, now as far as distribution is concerned, uh, the, the phenology, let's say, there are dragonflies on the wing all the year round in Cyprus. However, in January, we've got uh, very few records. And then as the time, as we go towards the summer, you'll see that May and June are the best months. July, it's equally, almost equally good August. And then again, the numbers would actually drop. The numbers, that the, the red numbers on top are the number of species that have been reported for that particular month. Uh, the, I'll talk about how many we actually have. We have, you can actually, actually see 32 species in Cyprus. So in May, you can see almost all of them. Okay, this is the, uh, the Cyprus, the, the list of dragonflies one can possibly see in Cyprus. Officially, the Cyprus list has 37 species. Um, Five of them, however, have not been seen recently. So we have 32. Out, um, oops, that's something wrong here, ignore it. <laughs> okay. Out of the 32, 23 do not fly in the UK, eight Zygoptera and 15, 15 Anisoptera. And I will, I will uh, cover now a, a bit more detail about the, the list. Uh, we have uh, nine Zygoptera, uh, three of them are in the Lestid Lestidae uh, category, which is the Charcolestis Providence, the Eastern Willow Spreadwing, the Dark Spreadwing, I'll use the common names, Common Winter Damsel. Uh, we only have one Calopteryx uh, species, which is the Banded Demoiselle. We've got the beautiful Odalisk, the Balacho Fatime. We've got th through Erythroma, the Lindeni and the Viridulum. And we have two Ishnura, we've got lots of elegance and it's a, a, a suspicious, but uh, our special one, as far as Ishnuras are concerned, is Ishnura Intermedia. The, the markings that you see on the, these little dragonflies, the blue and the highlighted ones, the highlighted ones are the ones that I'm going to cover in more detail. Um, and the, and the ones that have a dragonfly next to them are the ones that I think do not fly in the UK uh, at all. Now, uh, then we have IHTCI. I, sorry about all the pronunciations. Um, we, is a green, we've got the green-eyed hawker, the migrant hawker, the migrant emperor, the magnificent emperor, which is truly magnificent, the blue emperor, the lesser emperor, the eastern specter. We have only one uh, Nihogonfus, the Forcibadus, uh, the Alpotipialis. Um, we have the Chromocothemis Eritrea, the Plagodis the Fevri. We have six Othendrums, uh, five blue ones, 
uh, and the black and white is slender skimmer of Andrew Sapina, where Pantala Flavescens visits us and uh, in Cyprus from July onwards. Of course, Celisiothemis nigra. Uh, we've got this in Petrum Fos Columbus in Petrum Strioladun, and we do have three Trithemis uh, species, the violet drop wing, the red vein drop wing, the indigo drop wing. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. I'm starting with uh, one of the most beautiful uh, Zygoptera on Cyprus, which is Lestes mac Macrostigma. And, and I don't know how well you can see the, let me see if I can use these fancy things here, okay. okay you can see how big the, uh, the pterostigma is here. Okay, how do you use this? Okay. And it's, um, it flies from March to June. Um, it's, we have uh, two main locations for this particular species. They prefers brackish season of shallow lakes and thick vegetation, usually Volvoschinus maritimus or Jancus maritimus. So you usually see a lot of them together. This is a young uh, male specimen. You can see it keeps its wing closed and it has no pruinescence, whilst uh, an older one uh, developed pruinescence on its thorax and at the end of its uh, abdomen. Another very special one, it's um, a Palacio Patime, the odalisk. And um, it's, I, I'm also noting here how common it is. It, it's very common, uh, it's common, especially if you, go, uh, if you go to the right locations, if you go to the rivers. This, this prefers slow rivers and streams with permanent flow. Usually it prefers rocky uh, rivers and it flies from March to April. Um, the, the female, it's quite different to the male. It's a very heavy dragon, uh, uh, a damselfly. It's, you, you would almost think is a dragonfly. Um, and uh, it will be positive in tandem. Okay. Uh, and it's present in Eastern Mediterranean countries and part of Asia. Schnurra intermediate, which is the one we use for our logo for the group, it's very rare. It has scattered populations in parts of Asia. In Europe, it only flies on Cyprus, and it was only discovered in 2013. And it's the more, smallest stem cell on Cyprus. We believe that it was present in, in Cyprus before 2013, but because it looks so similar to Schnurra elegans, uh, pro pro probably we we did not find it before, we didn't see it, it was not noticed. You can see the, the, main, the main difference is that at, uh, it's abdomen, T8 and T9 are blue, whilst in Schnurra elegans only T8. Here's it's the impressive immature form of its females. Okay, here they are in tandem. Okay. Uh, I covered the Zygoptera that I thought might be of interest, um, more interest. Now I'm going to the Anisoptera, and the first one that we, I'm going to cover is uh, this Anaximaculiforms, which is a magnificent emperor. And, and truly, if you haven't seen this, it's, it's really uh, a, a beautiful, it's really magnificent. It's, it's, it's rare, but again, if you go to, to the sites that we know, it's visiting and uh, you'll be able to see it. Um, it's, it prefers, it returns to, we always see it uh, emerging at the same sites. Uh, so it's from April to September. Uh, it prefers stony rivers with some shade and permanent flow of water. And it's the largest dragonfly in Europe. It's 80 to 86 millimeters. The female, it's very different. You can see it's uh, yellow and black. I've only seen the female ones. And actually, it's very difficult to photograph unless somebody tells you where to go, where it sits. Um, and uh, I only have a couple of photographs of this magnificent, beautiful uh, dragonfly. It's present mainly in Asia and some Greek islands and the south coast of Turkey. Okay, another rare one, 
is Caliechna microstigma, which is the eastern spectra, which is a smaller specimen, it's 50 to 60 millimeters, and it's present in the Balkans, Greece, Turkey, the Middle East, and some parts of Asia. It lasts from March to July. Um, it is usually seen in the evening patrolling over shady streams and rivers with rich veget vegetation. This, this species, we, we believe that it might, be, might not be as rare as we think it is because of the records that we have. Because usually we do our accounts in the mornings, um, in the morning, sort of close to noon. We rarely are in the rivers uh, in the evenings when this particular dragonfly will actually uh, be active. Now, this is an immature female. This is an immature male. I found them by mistake. It was, they were hiding under some rocks. And uh, this is a mature male. You can see here we've got the yellow, yellow fronts and here's white fronts. Um, okay, now when we come to our tent rooms, as I briefly mentioned before, we have six, uh, of tent rooms on Cyprus, is the five of them are uh, blue, they're light blue. And it's, all, it's always the challenge with somebody that begins uh, doing dragonfly identification to separate those five. Um, one of them is Orthentrum chrysostigma, which is mainly an African and Asian species spreading northward. It's one of the six Orthentrums, as I said, on Cyprus. And we find that there is an increase in abundance and distribution on Cyprus. So it's, it's the mon it's most common on Cyprus now. Uh, it flies from April to December. I just seen at the end of, actually at the end of February, I just saw if the first, uh, my first uh, Centrum uh, Chrysostigma for the year. A very, I uh, ha must have just emerged. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it, you can find it almost any type of standing or slow flowing water. Uh, it poses very well for photographs. It, uh, when it, uh, you can find it many times in, in copula. Um, and it's, it's easy, to, easy to identify this particular one because it has this white stripe on the thorax and it keeps the white, the female keeps the white stripe for a long time. The, the male will develop uh, a blue prunescence and slowly the white stripe will disappear. Another Othentrum, Othentrum tainoladon is found in some Eastern Greek islands, the South coast of Turkey, the Middle East and parts of Asia. This is a small skimmer, it's indeed much smaller than the others. It's 38 to 30, 33 to 38 millimeters. And it's again quite common if you, if you go to flowing water, um, sunny rocky streams and small rivers, that's where you find it. And it's easy, it's relatively easy to identify because it usually prefers to sit on rocks 90% of the times and in an obelisk position. And it flies from April to November. Uh, it's female. It's, I, I think it's the most beautiful of, of the centrum females with these beautiful patterns on the abdomen. Now, the, the sixth Othentrum that we have here, which is not blue, again, is common, and it's an Asian species with increased abundance and distribution on Cyprus in the recent years. It was initially mainly on low altitudes, and it's spreading towards the mountains, spreading upwards. We, it flies from April to October, and you can find it in any type of standing water, inclu including brackish. And if you notice here, I mean, I don't think it's easy to see, but half of my photographs that I take of this dragonfly, they are eating another dragonfly. And here is eating a, a Teneral uh, Simpendrum fos colombi. And of course, uh, a, a, once, once they catch something, it's easier to photograph them because they're busy eating their big prey. Um, the male and the female are very similar. Um, yeah. Okay, now going to the Trithemis uh, species. Uh, we have three Trithemis on Cyprus. It's the Trithemis arteriosa, Trithemis festiva, and the Trithemis annulata. 
um, uh, the trithemis arteriosa is mainly from Africa. It was first reported on Cyprus in 1999, and it has increased its abundance and distribution in Cyprus. You can see that almost in any type of standing or slow flowing water, even uh, if they even visit swimming pools very often. Um, and flies from April to December. Here you can see, this is the mature male. You can see the, um, the red wing venation. So it's red main drop wing. It's really red and obvious. And uh, this is uh, again a male, but it's, uh, it's a mature male. And you can see here the venation is still bright yellow. It's golden. The, the, the typical obelisk position that you see the trithemis species. And this here, it's uh, I think one I think it's the most beautiful females that we have in uh, in on Cyprus. This is the female, and and you can see the beautiful markings on its wings. It has uh, on the tips and, and nodal markings. I'm checking the time. Okay, I'm doing well. Now, this is Trithemis festiva, and it's common. It's the indigo drop wing. Uh, the size is about the same. The three, the three Trithemis species are about the same size. It flies from April to December. It's an oriental species from Eastern Mediterranean to South uh, Asia, the Philippines, and New Guinea. Um, this has uh, most most of the specimens have some markings at the end of the wings. They're a little bit darker than the Trithemis arteriosa. This is the uh, a mature male. You see, it's very dark. It's it's almost black. Uh, and here we have an immature male when it's, it starts off uh, like the female, all golden and black. You can see here the weak venation, how da much darker it is. And I think this is the easiest way to tell a, a Trithemis festiva female apart from a Trithemis arteriosa, which confuses a lot of people in identification. If you look, if you remember to look at the color of the venation, you'll notice how much dark, it's really dark venation that the uh, Trithemis um, festiva has in comparison to the arteriosa. So look at this here. And if I go back, uh, this is the other one, which is very brown golden venation, and it is more golden. The markings are different, but the markings sometimes you don't remember. But uh, the venation, it's very easy to, to immediately, it strikes you as, oh, this is very dark. So this is a Trithemis festiva. And the last uh, anisopteron that I'm going to talk about is Pantala flavescens, the wandering glider. This amazing dragonfly, which is just five centimeters big, and it's from uh, from July to December. It's relatively common in Cyprus. You might not see it in big numbers, but you will see it patrolling many uh, habitats. Um, it has the longest migration amongst insects. Probably you know that already. Um, uh, you'll see it in lakes, dams, seasonal pools, rivers, and streams. There, but it's the thing is that it rarely stops for photographs. In this case, I was lucky twice to actually uh, see it uh, uh, resting. These are the two photographs. Um, uh, our observations as a, as a group prove that the species actually successfully reproduces in Cyprus. However, there is no evidence that the larva overwinter on Cyprus. Instead, we think, we believe that each year migrating individuals arrive on the island and that some of them can reproduce in suitable habitats and then they leave. So um, they come, they reproduce, and then they, they, they leave the island. Uh, the, the impressive here, it, it's other than it's being much bigger than the, all the other red species on Cyprus, um, the wing, the, if you see the actual wings, they're so wide and big there, it's very impressive. It's, ve it's very different from the other dragonflies. Okay. All right. That's about about. I don't know how fast I was here. Uh, <laughs> this uh, uh, concludes my um, uh, presentation about the dragonflies. I only wanted to mention another thing uh, as a PS. That's uh, in June in Cyprus in Paphos. Uh, the Cyprus Dragonfly Study Group, together with Terra Cypria, 
an environmental organization in the Worldwide Drug and Fire Association, we are hosting the International Conference of Otonatology. Thank you.